But we want to begin our worship service this morning. I'm going to ask my sister to join me up here. And I'm going to ask Janice to lead us in a word of prayer for you all stand. Amen. Precious Heavenly Father, we thank you today. We worship your holy name. For Lord, you are with us today, God. I know. And Lord, we just ask your presence as you fill this place where we pray. And Lord, that we will hear the words that you will have us to hear. And God, that you will just touch us with your, your power and your might. And we'll be just asking you, Father, to just, Lord, help us to. Worship you in the spirit and in truth. Amen. Amen. Praise God. You know, my, my brother had mentioned uh, I haven't led worship in almost a day. <laughs> God has taken me down a different path. And I became the women's ministry leader and um, things that I was like, this is a little more scary than singing to me. <laughs> and, uh, but you know what? Uh, I. Uh, God's been making, he, he's had such a move in our church and in uh, the state of Michigan. I just I just came back from a women's retreat at the state office, so, you know, be prepared. No, I'm just <laughs> and so when he said, you know, i got two options for you. And uh, he said, Jim said, don't spring this on you. But I do want you to sing a special, but uh, also, you know, would you lead in worship? And I was like, oh, <laughs> I said, you know what? I can't say no. I can't say no because God has got an anointing that he has going on with his people right now. And God has a movement that he is preparing for us in these last days. And I said, and I don't want to say no to anything that God has in store for anyone. So, you know, pray for me. Sing loud. <laughs> and uh, we're going to start off with that. Good old song, hymnal of He Set Me Free. Once like a burning prison, I dwelt, no free upon my soul, I fell. But Jesus came and listened to me, and glory to God, He said. Try to hold you, they're released in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, my brother. 
brother mentioned that we have a couple of relatives right now that are they're facing some pretty serious health situations right now. And, um, we had a good old prayer meeting in our in my brother's living room the other day, and uh, uh, my cousin is fighting COVID and he's got blood clots in the lungs and his, they started out the ventilator at 90% and they tr kept trying to drop it down then his kidneys failed and they couldn't do dialysis because they couldn't turn him on his back and we're like we're, we're going to go to pray because God has God has the answer and then yesterday I, 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 they answered and said we got the ventilator all the way down to 38% He's been on his back since 8.30 this morning, and we're going to test him, and we think that there's no more virus. Hallelujah! God is good. God is good. You know, Satan, what he brings to you, he has to bow. Yes, He has to bow, and when God says, nope, you got to go. Yeah. You got to go. Amen. He has to go. Yes. We, we have Amen. that power that God has given us, that resides in us, yes. that all we have to do is call on the name yes. of Jesus. Because yes. yes. you know what? He has my back. He has my front. He has my sides. There's nothing that surprises him. I want to sing his name. Is wonderful. Oh, worship him this morning. His name is wonderful. Oh, 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 oh,
to be able to pay every bill we need. Yeah. Hallelujah. And there's another side to that. The federal government overcharged in taxes on her unemployment. And so that week that she doesn't get paid, we got the check from the federal government to spam that week. Yes. Yes. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I mean, I mean, how much better did you get than that? By the way, I don't know if y'all noticed any similarity between Cindy's ministry and mine. And we don't have anything to like as far as getting excited about God. You can tell that. She's the quiet one of the family. But, you know, man, I got almost hit on that. No, I'm just kidding. Um, you know, it is, it, it is so great to serve a God, the God, who is able to come through. You know, I, there, there's even a song out right now that part of the song, one of the verses says, he's almost never early. Yes. But he's never late. Um, he is never late. We get in a fix. We, we get concerned. But that's why the Bible says be anxious in nothing. Don't let anything overwhelm you. I've got this. That's what, that's not King James, but that's what God said. I've got you. I've got you. Like Cindy said, before you, behind you, on both sides, I've got you. Praise God. Amen. I don't get to preach this morning, so you're just going to have to deal with some of these little internal things. Uh, you know, I, I get that way. But, um, and just a reminder, that if you have an offering, you can leave it at the plate on the way out. Uh, we don't actually receive offering during our services, but uh, you're certainly welcome to do that. Uh, and uh, we have a very special lineup this morning, uh, beginning right now. And uh, Sister Jerry has agreed to come and bring us a special song. And then just before my dad preaches, Cindy's going to be back up here. She's going to be giving a special song. And then I'll come back up and give a little bit of introduction to a gentleman that I know fairly well. So. Praise God. Bless the Lord Jesus. Am I good? All right. I haven't sung this one for a while. Mess up.
September 15th, with God's help, I will have three years sober. That's all right. Praise God. God is good all the time. All the time. All the time. God is good. We've got an amazing God. Amen. And, you know, there's another song, and I really appreciate this song this morning. There's another song that's out there right now that says that God doesn't give up on us when we really could deserve to have Him do so. Yeah. Well, we deserve to have Him do so all the time. But, you know, especially when things are just not quite where they need to be in our lives. But Joshua, he had to work today, so that's why he's not even here with us today. But uh, Joshua was watching a, a video with us a little a few weeks ago, and, and we brought it back from... Uh, from where we went to the Creation Museum in Kentucky. And uh, it's, it's about the universe. And it takes you from Earth and takes you out billions and billions and billions, trillions of miles into space 
where the edge of the known galaxy or the edge of the known uh, universe and it looks back on where earth should be and Josh said great Scott we're all specks on a speck <laughs> why would God even want to to have anything to do with specks on a speck and Janet spoke up that she's got a little bit of preacher in her I don't know if any of you have ever seen it but if you know we have a, another day where you know I can talk her into it I might have her bring a message yeah oh you got it I know you do uh, but she she speaks up and says because he loves us I was like, that's right, that's my preacher wife right there. <laughs> you know, when he when we don't have any fight left in us, he keeps the fight going. I'm gonna ask Cindy to come on up. She's got a special and then I'll come back up and <laughs> you know, I told him not to go down and drink water and grab water up here. <laughs> you know, um, I love that song. And it goes right along. Before I sing this, I, I have to share a testimony. The song I'm going to sing is called Beware His Name. And you know, you may face some really awful times. But it's how you wear his name yeah. in the midst of that. Amen. Amen. We were so excited, expecting our first, we thought, grandchild. And then we soon found out it was grandchildren as it was identical twin boys. Oh, the excitement of being a grandparent. That excitement. Soon turned to despair. Aiden lived for just a couple minutes. Ashton was stillborn. I held those baby boys in my arms and I said, oh, I heard you through this. I don't understand this pain that we're going through. And I resorted out. I had a little gazebo out with my little garden area. I would just go out there by myself. And I remember my mom talking to my dad and said, if there's ever a time Cindy will walk away from the Lord, I'm afraid it's now. <laughs> and see, I had praying parents. <laughs> and I cried out to God, and I wanted to be so angry, and I wanted the bitterness to root deep in me. But I kept turning to God and said, God, I don't understand this. And my family kept looking and was so bitter. And I kept saying, this isn't the God I serve. <laughs> you see how we wear his name. Speaks to people. And I kept seeking him. And I kept seeking him and saying, Lord, I don't want this bitterness to well up. And you know, I love the scripture where he says he will give you the desires of your heart. You see, when you can't even think of what the desires are, he'll give you those desires to ask for. Because that's what he did. He rose this feeling up in me and he said, ask me for a granddaughter. I don't want you to just ask me for a granddaughter. I want you to get specific with me. Because I love you and I'm going to show you how much I love you. And I remember sitting at my desk in tears pouring. And I got my paper out, pen, I, I journal a lot. And I write a lot of letters to God. And I wrote a letter to God asking for a granddaughter. And as I, read, I started writing this letter, this welled up in me. And I got very specific to the color of her hair, 
the texture of her hair, the color of her eyes. Because, you know, there is a part of me that's flesh that said, okay, God, you want me to get specific? You know what? I'm going to get specific. You know, there's a little bit of that flesh that was kind of like, all right. <laughs> but you know what God knew? What he was putting in me to ask for. I said, I want her. This is the mom to the child. I want you to give her the humor of her father, my son. <laughs> and God, I want you to give her a love of music and a love for you. Within a year, I held the desires of my heart in my arms. You see, when we went to the doctor and they were going to tell what the sex of the baby was, I'm sitting there going, I know. <laughs> I know what it is. <laughs> the doctor even looked at me and he goes, what do you think it is? I said, I don't think. I already know what it is. He goes, you do? I said, I do. Because you know what? God talked to me. He goes, what do you think it is? I said, I'm going to say it before you get the ultrasound put together. I'm going to have a granddaughter. <laughs> and you know what? I'm going to go one step further. I know what she's going to look like. <laughs> they thought I was a little crazy. The doctor goes in there and he goes, it's a girl. <laughs> And you know, we wear his name. <laughs> you know, my son and my daughter in law, who had had all that despair of losing that child, they got to see how I wore the name of Jesus. You see, God gave me this promise. This little girl's going to be 10 years old in November. <laughs> And she fulfills that letter more and more every day. But you know what, God goes one step further. Because my other son and his wife couldn't have children. So they started becoming foster parents. And they gave me three little girls. See, I had all boys, so God has a sense of humor for my husband. <laughs> But those girls, what they witnessed and what they went through, they see how Grandma wears his name. They see the love of Jesus. And I've got to see them when they first came and stayed the night. My little girl that I prayed for, these girls were like, I'm staying at Grandma's house because I'm having these nightmares. And my little granddaughter said, you know what I do? When I can't sleep, and I have bad dreams. I pray. And Jesus will meet you right where you are. And he will help you sleep. And I'm sitting there going, Brim's got a moment. <laughs> That's my baby. That's good. We have to wear his name. Yes. He will give us the faith to see it through. He'll be yeah. with us. Um. Pray for me in my voice as I try to sing. We wear his name. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hangs his head and starts to break. His daddy's gone no way to who knows where. He needs a hand to hold. He needs to hear their spoke. He needs someone to tell him Jesus came. Where his name, a troubled man, 
done. I can't lose my wife and son. Lord, help me, please. He needs to know there's hope. Someone to share the love. Someone to give the love that sets men free. Someone like you and me, where is Thank <laughs> you. 